Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the calculation of output power in klystron amplifier. So in the previous video I have explained the operation and working of this klystron amplifier. Later we have seen the mathematical analysis of this klystron amplifier where we have calculated the velocity of the electron after the application of RF input voltage. Later we have calculated the distance between the buncher and catcher cavities okay so let us consider the same diagram of the construction of this uh, klystron amplifier for the calculation of the output power so output power we are going to calculate from this rf output <coughs> so nothing but we need to calculate what is the amount of output power p out this is the amount of power we are giving here p in okay if any sinusoidal signal with some certain amplitude let it be v1 if you are giving after this after uh, passing through this klystron amplifier the signal will be greatly amplified because it is an hyper high power amplifier okay so for this purpose we are going to calculate what is the amount of the output power and uh, what could be its expression after derivation we are going to see in this video so now RF input voltage, RF voltage at catcher cavity let RF voltage at catcher cavity, catcher cavity is equal to V2 sin omega T2. Okay, if you if you remember, we have taken V1 sin omega T1 that has the input applied signal at the buncher cavity. Okay, just uh, we have taken as a sequence, we have taken we have V2 sin omega T2. Energy of a single electron. Energy of a single electron on the bunch at catcher cavity on the bunch bunch is nothing but group of electrons on the bunch at catcher cavity at catcher cavity that is equal to e into v2 sin omega t2 so what is the difference between first expression and second expression First expression is the amount of voltage that is coming out as a total V2 sin omega T2. But now when we are taking the single point of electron in consideration, then it is E into that energy is determined by the energy of electron. So E into V. So E into V2 sin omega T2. <coughs> so average power P average is equal to 1 by 2 pi integral omega t1 to omega t2 e v2 sin omega t2 d omega t okay here we are derivating with respect to omega t because it is omega t phase is the change here so the constant v e v2 that is constant by 2 pi is a constant omega t1 to omega t2 sin omega t2 d omega t so now here let us consider the transit time keep it like this let us consider the transit time what do you mean by transit time time taken by the electron to travel from cathode to the anode so time transit time tau v is equal to so the two instants let us consider it is t2 minus t1 if it is the buncher cavity it is the buncher cavity and after set ten distance we have a catcher cavity catcher cavity the distance between these two cavities is something like l1 okay now l1 is the distance between these two cavities and the time taken by the electron to travel from here to here it is that transit time tau tau is equal to t2 minus t1 so it is the t2 instant it is the t1 instant t1 is the instant at which the electron starts its journey from the buncher cavity and t2 is the 
time instant at which the electron ends its journey at the catcher cavity. So the electron has to travel this distance. So we need to consider it as T2 minus T1. That is what the transit time definition is. Now that is equal to what do you mean by T2? T2 is equal to that implies after just rearranging that T2 is equal to T1 plus tau. That is also we can write it as <coughs> tau is equal to we can write L by V1 L by V1. So that is equal to L by what is V1 already we know it is V0 into 1 plus V1 by V0 sin omega T1. Here it refers to the input signal. It refers to the input signal. So L by V0 it is the velocity of the electron with which it travels without any application of RF input voltage into 1 plus V1 by V0. Here it V1 refers the V1 refers to the uh, amplitude of the applied input signal and V0 refers to the DC potential applied between cathode and the anode and sin omega T1 is the sinusoidal signal applied at the RF input signal. Now it becomes L by V0 L by V0 and 1 plus V1 minus V0 sin omega T1 whole power it becomes now minus 1 by 2. Okay, so apply this binomial expansion, whatever we have done in the similar case previously. Now we are doing the same, apply binomial expansion, apply binomial expansion and neglect higher order terms, neglect higher order terms. Because they will become lesser values. So see V1 minus V1 by V0. If you take V1 is very very small compared to V0. As the denominator part is very high. If you go to the square and cube and next values. They definitely that value becomes lesser value. And it is nearer to 0. So we can simply neglect that. And so that tau becomes L by V0 into 1 minus V1 by 2 V0 sin omega t1 <coughs> okay now so what is p average p average is equal to e into e2 by 2 pi integral omega t1 to omega t2 sin omega t what do you mean by t t1 minus tau Okay, omega is equal to T1 minus tau after some time we are taking and that is equal to E by V2 by 2 pi integral omega T1 to omega T2 sin of it is D omega T sin of sin omega of T1 plus L by V0 into 1 minus V1 by 2 V0 sin omega T1. So D omega T. <coughs> okay. So the above equation can be simplified by considering the Bessel's relation. So by using by using Bessel's relation, Bessel's relation, the above equation can be simplified, the above equation can be simplified and re-returned in terms of in terms of bessel's function in terms of bessel's function so p average now it becomes simply e into v2 bessel's function is nothing but j1 of ex sin omega sin theta not here it j refers to the bessel's function j1 
J1 refers to Bessel's function. So where J1 of x refers to Bessel's function Next, x refers to bunching parameter bunching parameter that is equal to v1 by 2v0 into theta0. Next, theta0 is nothing but phase angle at catcher cavity. After traveling from buncher cavity to catcher cavity, what is the available phase at catcher cavity? So, phase angle at catcher cavity. So, the energy transferred for the energy transferred for n number of electrons is given by single electron is there it is v e into v2 if uh, multiple electrons are there then n into okay n into so n into p average is equal to n into e v2 integral omega t1 Okay, after converting this equation into Bessel's function, we can simply rewrite this equation as a Bessel function. So, I am not going back to the calculation part. I have already considered the Bessel's function E V2 J1 of X sin theta naught that is equal to I N into I N into E N into E is nothing but current. Okay, number of electrons n into charge of the each electron that refers to the current i v2 j2 of x sin theta naught. So, therefore, the maximum power delivered will be to the catcher cavity that will be occurred at the two Bessel function. The Bessel function it is having a value and at a sign theta naught theta naught is having a particular value at that instant only we will be having maximum average power so the maximum power will be transferred maximum power will be transferred to the catcher cavity when Bessel function j1 of x is equal to 0 0.58 and theta naught is equal to 5 by 2 theta naught is equal to 5 by 2 okay so now let us substitute these values in the above equation uh, i into v2 jn2 of x nothing but 0 0.58 into sin theta naught sin pi by 2 it is 1 so therefore p max maximum power that is equal to p out is equal to 0 0.58 i naught v2 i naught into V2. This is what the output power calculation for this Klystron amplifier.